Imagine that I have a twin. This twin is riding a green rocket. I observe this twin to be moving away from me at 99% the speed of light. Now let's have another twin of mine and this one is riding a red rocket. I observe him also moving at 99% the speed of light but in the exact opposite direction of my green twin. Here is a question for you. How fast are they moving relative to each other? If what I mentioned was using the normal velocities that we deal with in everyday life, for example, two cars, each one is moving at 99 kilometers per hour relative to its starting position, and they are moving in the opposite direction relative to each other, then it's just a matter of adding their velocities together and saying that they are moving at 198 kilometers per hour. But because we are talking about things that are traveling very close to the speed of light, it's not a straightforward answer. You see, no matter what you're doing or where you are, the laws of nature stay constant. This includes light moving at the speed of light. And because nothing moves faster than the speed of light, you need to define who exactly is looking at who. Because if you don't, it gets problematic. If I were to observe my green twin or if my green twin were to observe me, each one of us is going to see the other one moving away at 99% the speed of light. But because the relative velocity between us is so high, it's very close to the speed of light, there needs to be some changes in the way we observe each other to make sure that we always see light moving at the speed of light. If my twin had a clock and I were to observe that clock, I would see that clock ticking seven times slower than my own clock. His length would also shrink by around the same amount. But from his perspective, it is me who is having these effects. This is the same case if I were to observe my right twin or if my right twin were to observe me. But the question is, without me in the picture, how would they observe each other? Each twin does not see the other twin moving at 198% the speed of light. That would not make sense. What happens is that the apparent distance, length and time of the other twin would change so much, so harshly, that each twin is going to see the other twin not moving at 198% the speed of light, but at 99.995% the speed of light. However, when I come back into the picture as an outside observer, there is nothing preventing me from saying that the twins are moving away from each other at 198% the speed of light. There is nothing fundamental being broken here, as I've explained. No matter who is observing who, they will see the other one moving at less than the speed of light. But because I am an outside observer, I can actually see two objects moving away from each other faster than the speed of light. This moving away from an outsider's perspective cannot exceed two times the speed of light. Why? If you were to imagine two photons moving away in the opposite direction, you're going to see them moving away at two times the speed of light. Now, the problem with this example is that it's too idealistic. This never really happens in reality. There is curvature in the fabric of space-time. We're going to discuss that in a bit. There is acceleration. You don't just get to 99% the speed of light just like that. Chances are you've had to accelerate. And this complicates things quite a bit. In fact, there is something related to acceleration that makes you think you are traveling faster than light, but are you really traveling faster than light? If I started accelerating away from Earth at around 1 g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and I kept this acceleration constant throughout half of my journey, then I decelerated at the other half of my journey, then by the time 50 years pass from my perspective, I would have traveled a distance that exceeds the current radius of our observable universe. This means, on average, I traveled a distance of 100,000 light years per hour. Did I just travel faster than the speed of light? Not really. Nothing can travel faster than light. What I mentioned can actually happen. It is theoretically possible, although you would need an unbelievable amount of energy to do it, but it can happen. However, it is not traveling faster than light. Why? Because of time dilation. For an outside observer, assuming they were not doing anything funny like staying near a black hole's event horizon, if they are, they need to get out of it. They can't because it's a black hole. Assuming they were not really doing anything like that, then time would have passed 
much more for them than the amount of time passed for me. Light must be able to cover a distance much larger than the distance I can cover in the same amount of time. This means while yes, I did in fact travel 100,000 light years per hour on average from my own perspective, by the time my journey ends, much more time would have passed elsewhere and the observable universe in that future is different than the observable universe that I started with. Imagine that objects can move through four dimensions rather than the three dimensions we usually associate movement of objects with. Those four dimensions are three space dimensions and one time dimension. The combination of all of those dimensions give you the fabric of space-time. Usually the fabric of space-time is visualized as this two-dimensional sheet. It's not really a two-dimensional sheet, it's more like a four-dimensional thing. It's very difficult to visualize what it is, but you know, it's there. By punching this fabric, by making holes in it, by making cupcakes out of it, you can modify it in such a way to be able to travel in a different way than light. And in a sense, pass it without actually traveling faster than it. Okay, so let's take a piece of space-time and let's imagine that I am on that particular piece. Again, space-time is not really a two-dimensional sheet, it's more like a four-dimensional thing, but a two-dimensional sheet would still give us a good approximation for what a four-dimensional sheet would do. Right, so let's say that I see light and I tell it Hey man, you want a race? And light says nothing, it's light, it just goes at the speed of light. And now I need to get to a particular destination faster than it. How can I do that? Easy. I invent this kind of machine that will adjust the fabric of space-time in a way that shrinks it in the front. It's like pulling the destination to me and bulges it up behind me in a way that pushes me forward towards the destination. In my own reference frame, I am not traveling faster than light. The space itself that I am on top of is being adjusted so that I can reach the destination faster than light, even though I have not really traveled faster than light. And that is something that is possible to happen. You probably heard something similar called the Alcubier drive, or as you know it, the warp drive. The other way that you can adjust the fabric of space-time in a way to allow you to pass light without actually traveling faster than it is the idea of wormholes. Now wormholes can be misleading because they're not technically holes. Usually when you visualize a wormhole, people would take a sheet of paper, which is two-dimensional, as I've said, the fabric of space-time is four-dimensional, not two-dimensional, and they make a hole through it. Now if you notice, the fabric is two-dimensional, but the hole, the shortcut that is created in this two-dimensional sheet is three-dimensional. There is one dimension that was added in order to make the wormhole work. How would that look like when it comes to a fabric that has four dimensions in it? One of the few illustrations that can give you somewhat of an accurate picture of what a wormhole would look like on the outside is the movie Interstellar. They actually showed the wormhole as a sphere that you can enter from any part of it. Now going through it is more complicated because as I've said, you are adding more dimensions as you are entering the wormhole to get to another side of the um, universe. But essentially wormholes do allow you to adjust the fabric of space-time in a way to pass light without actually traveling faster than it. The problem is those things haven't really been observed yet. We might be able to create them in the future, but right now let's focus on something that is actually currently adjusting the fabric of space-time in such a way that is making certain objects move away from each other faster than the speed of light. And that is the expansion of the universe. The fabric of space-time right now is being stretched in such a way that for every one megaparsec or one million parsecs or 3.3 million light years, 67 kilometers are being added every second. What does this mean? I'm glad you asked. Let's imagine that we are the planet 
at the center. The planets closest to us are a thousand megaparsecs away, and the planets after that are two thousand megaparsecs away, and so on and so forth. The expansion of the universe would make it so that this would happen over time. Now let me be clear here, objects have to be far enough away from each other so that the effects of gravity would not overpower the expansion of the universe. However, after a certain distance, you could say, the further an object is away from us, the more distance is being created between us and that particular object. In fact, galaxies that are around 16 billion light years away from us, the light they are emitting right now, right this very moment, will never actually reach the earth why because a distance is being created between us and those galaxies due to the expansion of the universe at such a rate that the light emitted from those galaxies will never actually traverse that distance ever any galaxy and any light emitted by such a galaxy further away than 16 billion light years will be receding away from us faster and faster as distance and time continue to increase. This expansion of the universe could be the thing that gives us an answer to the question, what is the fastest thing? Assuming this expansion is constant throughout the entire universe, then all you have to do is determine which object is at the furthest distance between us and it. It might be 100 billion light years away, it might be 500 trillion light years away, it might be 650 quintillion light years away. It depends on the size of the entire universe. As long as it's at the furthest possible distance, then in essence it would be the fastest object because it would be moving away from us at a rate much higher than anything else in the universe. But to whoever is living on that planet, assuming there is life on that planet, probably going to be on some of the moons because it's a, you know, a gas giant. Anyway, we would actually be the fastest thing. But what do you think? What is the fastest thing? Thank you very much and I will see you next time.